Costa from Ford Know How. Today we're going to be looking at some of the off-road capabilities of the next gen Ford Ranger. We're going to take a closer look underneath. We're going to look at some of the suspension aspects, some of the capacities and some of the off-road adjustments that they've made to this vehicle. In an effort to make the suspension lighter and the steering more responsive, Ford has made a few adjustments. So it's an all aluminium steering hub. So the upper and lower control arms are now made out of tubular steel rather than a full cast iron component. Again, this is to reduce weight and to improve steering sensitivity and control. So next gen Ranger Wildtrak is still fitted from factory with these steel undercarriage bash plates to protect the engine and to protect all the low hanging components of the engine. They've added two recovery points now, so there's a left one and a right one, and they're actually bolted directly onto the chassis of the vehicle. And these, these are both rated recovery points, meaning that you should be able to recover the car from any one of these points in an off-road situation. Worth noting, with these new box steps that they introduced, they've been properly engineered and bolted onto the undercarriage of the vehicle so that they're strong and functional. In addition to the rear disc brakes, they've also introduced the electric park brake, which is controlled by this motor. This little motor would then use the brake calipers to activate or rather engage and disengage the park brake. So we were informed that Ford has added more bracing in the chassis of the next gen Ranger and we can see signs of it right here. So these braces are definitely new. I've had that checked with, with one of our technical staff that this was not on the original Rangers. And you can see just running through the undercarriage a lot more links from the left to right side of the suspension. The fuel tank also gets this fully integrated bash plate. Um, and there's also an extra bash plate over here to protect the transfer case. Front differential is now cased in aluminium where the original or rather the previous generation was cast iron. The advantages of aluminium is that it's lighter and it also dissipates heat better allowing the differential to cool down quicker. We've got an increase of 50 mils in the wheel track. That's the distance this way between the two wheels. And there's also a 50 mil increase in the length of the next gen Ranger. GCM has increased to 6350 and the GVM has increased to 3230. Brake towing capacity has remained the same at 3,500 kilograms. The addition of the integrated electric brake controller is now standard on the Wildtrak Ranger, meaning that you don't have to fit an accessory and or aftermarket controller. Definitely worth a mention is this front camera. You can see from the way it's angled, it's definitely designed to assist you A, with parking, but also with off-roading. The angle ensures that it's always giving you clear visibility of what's going on around the front of your vehicle, even if you're coming onto the apex of a hill or incline. The other feature that you, that's worth pointing out at, at this angle is the washer. So the front camera is actually designed to an integrated washer. You can see it just underneath the camera there, which allows you to keep that camera clean in an off-roading situation. So there's six drive modes, normal, eco, tow, slippery, mud, and sand. So those are your six different drive modes. If you're off-roading and you're stuck in a position where you need to see what's going on around the vehicle, you simply press this button. It brings up the front camera and it also brings up this 4x4 window. This 4x4 window gives you different options. It allows you to access your hill descent assist. It also allows you to lock the rear differential. And if we go into the menu here, you can actually go into different off-road modes. So this gives you a diagrammatic representation of your pitch and your angles. From this screen, if you want to access your top-down view, you have to be in reverse. And that gives you the 360 degree view camera comes on. Drive modes are selected here. And they're actually linked to the six drive modes that we spoke about earlier. So depending on which ones you pick, if you pick sand, it automatically goes into four high. Mud stays in four high. Slippery also stays in four high. Towing is also done in four high. Eco mode switches over to two high. And your normal driving mode 
will also stay in too high. For low is therefore not selected automatically. So in the sand mode, it automatically locks the rear differential and puts you into four high. In mud, it leaves you in four high and also automatically locks the rear differential and disengages the traction control. Both your yaw and pitch sensors have also come up on the screen. When we go to the slippery mode, it unlocks the rear differential, leaves us in the four high position and switches on the electronic stability program. In the towing or hauling mode, it stays in four high, the differential is switched off and the ESP is switched on. In normal mode, we go into too high, so it switches off four by four, it switches off the rear differential and it leaves the electronic stability program on. And, I'll, and similarly in eco mode, the same. So too high, differential off and ESP on. For more information, don't forget to subscribe. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.